welcome to the Astrology Witch Podcast. I'm your host, Diana, and today we will be discussing the star signs, also known as sun signs in astrology. Somehow I went through the entire first season of the podcast without ever doing an episode on sun signs, which is kind of hilarious to me. Well, better late than never, I guess. Uh, So here we go. One thing I want to note before we begin is that if you have a day chart, your sun sign will be more important for you. Whereas if you have a night chart, your moon sign will be more important. Obviously, take this as it resonates, but that's pretty much the general accepted uh, practice for day charts versus night charts. And also, I feel like I spend so much time on this podcast saying that, you know, you're so much more than your sun sign. Um, But then I realized I never stopped to talk about what your sun sign actually uh, signifies or indicates and what its significance is means in a birth chart, you know, unless you've had a reading with me and then you probably know what your sun sign represents for you. So yeah, let's get started on this episode. So in astrology, the sun is considered a benefic or positive placement overall. The sun represents our vitality, our conscious mind, and our creative drive and force of will. It's less about personality and more about life purpose. It's the part of ourselves which makes adult decisions and uses reason to approach situations. Like, think of when people ask the question of who are you, and most people answer with their job or career rather than their actual identity. Our sun sign represents our drive to actualize, and the sign it's in can indicate what those goals are in this lifetime. So it's sort of like your drive to do the thing you want to do in this life, um, And like the vitality of that thing, if you will. So some keywords for your sun sign include, um, you know, the sun is natively ruled by Leo. So that's a natural rulership. The sun's exalted in Aries. It's in its detriment in Aquarius and considered in its fall in Libra. Uh, One thing I do want to know about these terms is that detriment and fall can kind of scare people and think, oh, if I have sun in Aquarius or... If I have my son in Libra, does that mean it's bad? And no, it's not what it means. It, detriment and fall really are noting a discomfort where the son is not comfortable within these placements. And it comes from traditional astrology where, uh, you know, the Aquarius was traditionally ruled by Saturn and it was like further away from the sun. And also the procession of the equinoxes and the seasons um, and also the fact that Libra lands in a month where the sun is at like a, almost its weakest point before it uh, turns to, you know, fall and winter. So we're thinking about how like the sun is just not at the optimal phase, if that makes sense. Um, so that's kind of the rationale that we're employing here. It doesn't necessarily mean that like, you know, if you have sun in Libra or sun in Aquarius, that it's super terrible just by default. And it also doesn't mean that if you have Sun and Leo or Sun and Aries, that it's super great by default. All of these things will have their positives and negatives. And as I always say, you're more than your sun sign. So I digress. Anyhow, so the sun rules the head, the sense organs, the right eye, the heart, the solar plexus, the life breath, your, your spirit, as it were, <laughs> your sensory movement and organs. It rules the gold wheat and barley. Also, the sun never retrogrades. That's one of the really interesting things about the sun. It's always moving forward. Um, It rules your ego, your heart, your solar plexus. Uh, It's our creative force, our will to live, our conscious self, and our sense of individuality, our sense of self, and like what we strive to be. So a lot of times, our sun sign can represent not necessarily where we are comfortable but what we are learning to be in this life rather than what our natural skills might feel like. It's our self-image and values, our sanity and our vitality. The sun is our direction during this incarnation and what we are actually learning to be rather than what we are innately. So the sun in our birth chart represents reason and consciousness as opposed to instinct or subconscious, which might better be represented by our moon placement and sometimes uh, by extension the 12th house. The sun represents our present, the here and now. While the moon informs our perception and current emotional state through the lens of our past experiences. And, you know, that's how it brings us comfort is 
by looking at our past experiences and allowing us to see, okay, like, what was my childhood and my experience with my parents or my mother like, and how do I gain nurture from that? Um, but it doesn't really function necessarily so much in the present as much as the sun does. So that's not to say that the sun in a person's chart is unbiased. Uh, on the contrary, the sun can be expressed in a number of ways. At its finest expression, we're becoming our best self through the drive of our sun placement, uh, using our energy to work towards and achieve our goals in perfect synergy. And at its worst, we're becoming like egomaniacs, you know, <laughs> solely driven by achievement in the world or consumed with self-absorption or self-importance or entitlement. When we're living through our best sun self, we are proud, intentional, filled with purpose and passion and creative. On the flip side, we might be pompous, domineering, self-absorbed, and judgmental. In a birth chart, the house where the sun lives and the zodiac sign which rules it often represents a person's life purpose and their approach to attaining it. It can represent how we seek to build our legacy and make our mark on the world. The house where the sun lives can show us where we shine with these particular qualities and the areas of life can illuminate the kind of experiences which help us to build our individuality, our skills, and shape our sense of pride and creativity. So in order to understand and have, or have a full understanding of your sun sign and its house placement, we need to examine both. For example, if you have your sun in Libra in the fifth house, in that case, you want to look at sun in Libra, but also sun in the fifth house indications in order to gain a full understanding of how this placement could be expressed. It would be very different than a person with the same sun sign in a different house, even if both people have their sun in Libra. Also in ancient astrology, the sun represented kings, leaders, wealth and riches, eloquence, authority, the mind, intelligence, our interactions with the gods, judgment, public life, the father and the master, notable figures, metalsmiths, especially gold and copper and mentors of coins, the height of fortune, uh, if it was like in a really well dignified place, and a conscious perception of the soul. So we could think of this in the modern terms as like being really successful and fully actualizing, you know, full self-actualization. The sun in a strong position indicated a person who was well-mannered, dignified, faithful, filled with integrity, high judgment, who was stately, majestic, honorable, trustworthy, and humane. A badly placed sun indicated arrogance, pride, disdain for others, poor judgment, restlessness, dominating temperaments, and foolishness. <laughs> The sun, in a more practical sense, can indicate our sense of organization, the ability we have to make decisions, to strive toward our goals, and the actual literal health of our body and vitality. It's our ability to manifest, to shine in the world and rise to the challenge, to assert ourselves, to fight for independence, and move with purposeful decision, the archetypal hero and all solar deities, meaning all solar gods and goddesses. The sun can represent our magnetic inner core, what our conscious mind and life force is driving us towards. It's our purpose in this life and the source we tap into to accomplish it. What we do to bring meaning into our life is our sun's very essence and combined with our rising sign or ascendant ruler, uh, also known as the chart ruler, can represent our capabilities to achieve the goals we have that are produced by our sun sign or our sun placement. So here's a quick breakdown into what each zodiac sign indicates if it lands in your sun. So you're in Aries if you're born from March 21st to April 19th. Aries is a cardinal fire sign ruled by Mars, which is exalted in the sun. And it's a competitive nature uh, sign with passionate, bold, driven, courageous, and basically willing to jump into challenging situations with vigor in order to achieve goals and it really follows like it's got instincts and it has a lot of courage and um, nerve to just chase after what it wants. You're a Taurus if you're born from April 20th to May 20th and Taurus is a fixed earth sign ruled by Venus which brings a stable slow moving plodding along stubbornly towards its ambitions type of nature. And it has a love for the natural world, for raw, untamed beauty, and indulging the senses of life. You're a Gemini if you're born from May 21st to June 20th. Gemini is a mutable air sign ruled by Mercury, which is easily bored and therefore on a constant search to quench that thirst 
uh, for curiosity, entertainment, um, learning, and adventure. There's a duality of this sign which brings a lot of spontaneity and playfulness and sometimes neurotic energy to a person. You're a Cancer if you were born from June 21st to July 22nd. Cancer is a cardinal water sign ruled by the moon that's easily able to move between intuitive and logical modes of being, which makes it a master of manifestation, especially if connecting with others and commitment to its goals are required. And it values its family and roots deeply, cherishes those they trust, and takes a cautious, protective approach. It's a highly protective sign, and Cancer is very psychic and sometimes takes things too personally, but can also read people to filth. <laughs> you're a Leo if you're born from July 22nd to August 22nd. Leo is a fixed fire sign ruled by the sun itself, which is passionate, loyal, dramatic, and led by its heart. It has a love for luxury and status, is theatrical, fiery, and has a talent for leadership, the spotlight, and entertainment. So like anything related to amusement, creative self-expression, um, performance, things like that. Also leadership and recognition are, it's a natural leader. You are a Virgo if you were born from August 23rd to September 22nd. Virgo is a mutable earth sign ruled by Mercury, known for its attention to detail, sense of pragmatism, logical reason, and systematic approach. There's a tendency here toward perfectionism, a gift for problem solving and helping others, and a pure-hearted approach to life and skill development. You're a Libra if you're born from September 23rd to October 22nd. Libra is a cardinal air sign ruled by Venus, known for its amiable nature and sense of balance, justice, beauty, and compromise. They're highly cerebral because they're air signs, so it's always going to be ruled by the intellect, first and foremost, able to see both sides of any situation and love to achieve harmony and refinement in all situations. And it's important to note that like, because they are ruled by Venus, they also love beauty, but they love like a very polished sense of beauty, whereas I would say that Venus um, ruled Taurus is a lot more about loving like beauty in its natural raw form. You're a Scorpio if you're born from October 23rd to November 21st. Scorpio is a fixed water sign ruled by Mars in the traditional or Pluto in the modern and it's known for an, its enigmatic aura Mystery, elusiveness, magnetism, psychic abilities, and subtle but intense power. A love for intimacy and all things below the surface, it seeks to unearth all the riches below with acute precision. With time, it gains much wisdom and compassion through the ability to grow and transform. You're a Sagittarius if you're born from November 22nd to December 21st. Sagittarius is a mutable fire sign ruled by Jupiter, known for its love of learning philosophical wisdom, optimism, and independent nature, and adventurous spirit. There's a huge quest for meaning and knowledge and spiritual enlightenment, as well as a passionate drive to go where their blazing hearts lead them. You're a Capricorn if you're born from December 22nd to January 19th. Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign ruled by Saturn, known for its serious and mature nature. Patience, dedication, determination, and resilience are all qualities that Capricorns are known for. They're not easily defeated and have often built up a strength by overcoming many obstacles and challenge. And it's important to note that Capricorns really go by what they know and they have experienced. They really trust what has come before, um, which is why they're so traditional and why they're more conservative in nature. And so that's either through their past experience, through what their parents experienced, through what, you know, tradition or society or family says as a whole uh, should be the way toward whatever they're trying to achieve. So they will have this sort of methodical mindset about those things and maybe even a rigid mindset about how to get things done. Okay, Aquarius. You're an Aquarius if you're born from January 20th to February 18th. Aquarius is a fixed air sign ruled by Saturn and Uranus, considered to be closest to the sky gods. Um, there's a huge sense of innovative progressiveness, fierce independence, logical reasoning. They're considered the healer of humanity and thus a dedication to making the world a better place. They're also known for being detached 
logical, popular, clever, and experimental. Um, and <clears throat> one thing to note about Aquarius is that, you know, traditionally ruled by Saturn, modern ruled by Uranus, but considered closest to the sky gods. Um, this has to do with Aquarius being the water bearer or and the um, Greek myth behind Aquarius where, you know, um, it's considered like a, a beautiful dedication and symbolism um, within the myth to the water bearer who fed the nectar to the gods and was like very close with the gods and was considered very beautiful and popular and lo beloved by them. So that's kind of where it's coming from. And even if you look at like the 11th house, which natively is ruled by Aquarius, um, we think about the fact that it's like a gateway to the sky or the outer spaces. Okay, finally, Pisces. If you're born from February 19th to March 20th, Pisces is the final sign in the zodiac, an immutable water sign ruled by Jupiter traditionally or Neptune in the modern. They're known as the most spiritual sign of the zodiac given their innate abilities for empathy, psychic intuition, compassion, emotional sensitivity, creative imagination, and tendency toward self-sacrifice. Pisces is considered to have absorbed all the lessons of the previous signs, so the joys, hopes, fears, pain, and suffering. There's also duality in Pisces between fantasy and reality, um, and, you know, the, that's sort of represented by the two fish that is the Pisces symbol, the fish swimming in opposite directions, and in that lies its gifts for human empathy, beautiful artistic creative uh, abilities, and a deep well of imagination and psychic abilities because they're pulled between physical and spiritual realms. All right, that's really all I have. This episode is incredibly short, <laughs> but that's all I have. That's all I think you need to know about sun signs or star signs as they were called. Actually, uh, fun fact, back in the day, uh, I don't know how like how far back this may be in the Middle Ages, uh, when people asked each other what your star sign was, they were actually referring to their rising sign, not their sun sign. Star signs, uh, as a reference to sun signs, uh, started becoming popular, I think, in the 60s uh, with, like, newspaper, you know, horoscopes and things like that. Um, it might have been earlier than that. Don't quote me. But, um, yeah, so there, it's interesting how we've had this shift uh, where you know, rising signs used to be so much more important than sun signs, and sun signs became somehow a lot more important for some reason. I'm not sure why that shift was. Maybe modern astrologers had a hand in that. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting that we're sort of getting back to that with people asking each other what their big three is and beyond. So <laughs> I hope you found this helpful. Um, I really cannot believe that I went through the entire first season without talking about sun signs, not once. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny, but hopefully you found this helpful as like a nice little basics episode if you haven't really thought about your sun sign or if you were wondering why I hadn't talked about sun signs yet. <laughs> um, just trying to wrap those things up and yeah, hopefully you found it helpful. Um, you can follow me on social media and, or shoot me an email, theastrologywitch89 at gmail anytime. I am on Twitter at AstroWPodcast, Facebook, the Astrology Witch Podcast page, and I also have a Facebook group called Astrology Witches, which you can join, um, and I'm on Instagram at Astrology Witch Podcast. If you care to shoot me a message, I would love to hear from you if you have any feedback for me if you want to talk about the episodes or any astrology concepts I am here for you uh, also if you have any input about future episodes I would seriously love your input I'm trying to keep a running list of future episodes but it always helps if people give me their thoughts on what they think could be helpful to learn about so yeah I would love to hear from you uh, also, I have a Patreon if you're interested in getting access to more exclusive monthly content where I give you early access to ad-free podcast episodes. And on top of that, you get exclusive content, mostly like magic and astrology content, um, including, oh my goodness, new and full moon reports and things on magical workings and all of the wheel of the year holidays and zodiac signs uh, I'm actually working on a, a project this year where I'm doing zodiac path workings 
it during each zodiac season as they come along throughout the year. So those have already begun rolling out since Aries season. And um, so quite a few of those are out at this point. And you, uh, it's like a mid-tier uh, to gain access to those path workings as well as the Wheel of the Year path workings and tons of other perks, honestly. So check that out if you're interested in those. I've also had inquiries about birth chart readings. I do offer them, but my um, schedule only opens up once a month at the beginning of each month. So if you are interested in getting a birth chart reading, a transit reading, or a compatibility reading, those are the three types that I offer. Um, hit me up on my email, theastrologywitch89 at gmail, or anywhere on social media. If you shoot me a message, we can schedule you in. Um, you're most likely to be able to get in before I close them again if you ask me at the beginning of the month because they tend to vote pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in getting a reading with me, that's how you can contact me. And um, I deliver them via voice message and to your email. So you can ask any questions you want and always have the recording and listen over again if you want because it is quite a lot of information. And I've just found that that's like the best way for people to hear their chart reading so that they don't you know forget everything that's said if I've done it in a zoom and they never can go back and listen um so yeah uh hopefully you find that helpful finally if you want to learn more about how to spiritually heal and transform your life using astrology then book a call with me so you can learn more about my program embracing the sacred soul blueprint which is really just about spiritual growth and healing using the pain points in astrology and the uh, most difficult things that we find in our charts as well as some of the strongest points in the chart and our spiritual gifts and how to tap into our inner wisdom um, that's pretty much what the course is about but if you want to learn more about it definitely book a call with me it's free uh, the link will be in the description along with all the other links you might need so uh, thanks so much for listening and i will see you in the next one mm -hmm.